Welcome to Cinera Automation Series. Today we are doing something pretty cool in the world of entitlement analysis. I'm going to build a fully automated FEM workflow in less than five minutes. So let's jump directly into the Cinera platform. So what makes it easy are these templates. The templates are pre-built workflows that are made as generic as possible for various applications. For example, the templates for CAD, templates for FEA, for additive manufacturing and things like that. So instead of starting from scratch every time on a blank canvas, one can make use of these templates to develop workflows in a faster way. And here we also have something called as libraries. The libraries are a collection of various workflows or templates. In my library, I have the expertise of all my teammates from various domains, such as CAD department, material specialists, and FEM specialists. So all their knowledge has been pushed into this library in the form of the templates. So today I'm going to make use of these templates to build an automated workflow very quickly. So let's jump into the workflow now. So what we want to do, we have a geometry being imported and I want to perform a static simulation. So as we all know, the first step in the FEM analysis is to mesh the given geometry. Here one can mesh between different meshes. Let's say you can use hypermesh to mesh the given geometry, or you can also use Cinera mesher. So I'm going with this for now. And of course, we all know one has to define the element size to mesh this given part. So here comes the usage of my first template. So instead of manually defining an element size, I want the software to automatically calculate this element size. And that's where I use my first template called as determine mesh element size. So what it all does is I just have to input the given geometry and then based on various approaches, it will give me the element size. So how does this template looks? Let's go inside this workflow. So inside this workflow is the knowledge of my FEM specialist. So they have built three different approaches to calculate the element size for any given geometry. And this is as generic as possible. So let's go back to my main workflow and here as you can see, there is an element size that has been suggested by my template. And if I change the approach, I would get a new element size. So we can use this element size and mesh the given part. Let's change the view. So here you can see the geometry has been meshed. And the next step is to assign the material properties. So let's define the solid part and give it a name, P solid. And here I want to define a material. Here goes another template or a workflow. So here I have my material specialist created a library, which is called select material. So here I can make use of this library and select any material based on my requirement. So let's go with aluminum for now and input the material properties. Of course, one can also push more materials to this template. So now that we have created a mesh and assigned material properties. So let's go to the boundary conditions part now. Here we have the imported geometry as you observe. So these are color attributes that help us to set up the boundary conditions easily. So how does it work? There is another template built by my CAD specialist. So what it does is it extracts the regions of this metadata based on the given geometry input. So here we have given the geometry as input and here it extracts the regions based on those color data. And it also automatically categorizes them into the fourth region because this is where I want to apply the force and the constraint regions. So now we will use these regions to define the boundary conditions and the load step. So this is another template again I will use to define the boundary conditions. So this template fixes the SPC regions in all degrees of freedom and applies an axial force on the force region in the given direction with the given magnitude. So let's simply connect the force regions and the SPC regions, which are the constraint regions. So now that we have the load step that has been created and there is also an RBE connector, which is defined for this force region. So let's assemble this into an FEM model. So here we can construct an FEM model, give it a name and input the solid parts, which are P solids and our load step. And here goes the RBE elements. We have successfully constructed an FEM model. Now the next step is to solve this. 
So here one can select between different solvers based on the solver that you have. So there are multiple solvers such as Abacus, Ansys, Nastran, Optistruct and Cinera solver as well. So based on your requirement, you can select your own solver. So I am selecting Cinera solver. It has solved quickly and let's visualize the results. Visualize uh, on Mrs. Stress or you can also visualize nodal displacements or rotations. If there are multiple load cases, you can switch between those different load cases as well. So now this whole workflow is built as generic as possible and can be adapted to any changes. Let's test this workflow. So here I can go back and change the material. And as you can see, the whole workflow will run automatically. But you can argue these are very minor changes that one can easily include into any FEM process. So let's look at a completely different geometry and recycle this whole workflow. So here, I have a completely different geometry, the size and the orientation as you can see between these two different geometries. So what I'm going to do is perform an FEM analysis for this geometry, which is the similar static case. What I would do is simply switch the cables from my first geometry to the second geometry and wait for it to run. As you can see, it is going through each process step by step and solving for the new geometry. And here we have the new results. So that is the secret of my efficiency. With the collective knowledge of my team, I have built a fully automated workflow with their expertise built into the software. This is how one can accelerate their engineering processes by simply connecting all the engineering domains, tools, knowledges together. Thanks for watching.